Howdy girls and gays. My name is Laura and welcome to my very first video on YouTube. I'm so excited. This has been something that I have been wanting to do for so long. My friends have always been, you know, kind of whispering in my ear like, you should start a channel, you should start a channel. Because I get so many questions from them about why this product doesn't work for them, or how they can make this look better, or how do I do this for this eye shape. And it's so much easier to do something like this versus typing out a long paragraph. YouTube has just become this huge community spanning across the world, and there are so many different people to learn from and grow from, and I have always been passionate about makeup. It was something that I taught myself back in eighth grade, and I've been practicing for years ever since. It always relaxes me, it's so much fun, and I always feel so invigorated afterwards. And uh, now I'm finally comfortable enough in my skill level to share what I love doing with the world and with the people that mean the most to me, which is you guys. So if you do not know who I am, I am 21 years old. I go to Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas. I'm a marketing major and an art minor, which means I have creative energy out the wazoo and I have been needing somewhere to put all of it. So I am introducing my YouTube channel and my brand new blog to the world this weekend at the same time. Um, I will link that in the description box below and I have a post going up that kind of coincides with this video today, but because I am new to this whole filming editing thing, I wanted to keep my first video pretty short and sweet. So I'm just doing a brief introduction into my foundation routine and it's very versatile. I can throw it on with just some eyebrows and some lashes or with a full glam look for a night out. So most of the products, if not all of the products that I'm gonna use today are affordable, available at the drugstore or at Ulta. So hopefully this video can be used by anyone. Without further ado, let's get into it. So I just got up. <laughs> all I've done so far is haphazardly blow dry my hair. I'm just using these little clippies, these dump free clips from Walgreens, just to hold my hair back from my face. I'm trying to get out of the habit of throwing my hair up in a messy bun all the time because I know that these ponytail holders can cause breakage and I know that because every time I take my hair down there's a lot of hair in the ponytail holder, so I'm trying to be better. Good morning! <laughs> I'm going home this weekend. My little brother Matthew is graduating high school. <gasps> After I do my makeup, I'm going to be packing and finishing up laundry to head there, but I wanted to go ahead and crank this video out so that I could have it edited and uploaded by this weekend. I figured a good little introductory video would be to do just my go-to base for kind of a glam version of your skin but better. Like it's obvious you're wearing makeup but it's not obvious that you have on a full face, you know? And I also have a blog post that's going to go up at the same time as this video when I launch my new and improved blog. My blog post will go over all of the products used in detail and there will be links to everything and prices. Almost all of the products that I am gonna use today are drugstore or affordable um, at Ulta. If there are any that I use that are more expensive, I also have drugstore options that I kind of switch between. Just because this is my inaugural video, you know, I want to use the good the good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go wet my beauty blender. And don't come for me, I know it's dirty. Like I said, I'm busy. So I'm starting with a clean base. All that I have on right now is a little bit of residual mascara from yesterday because nobody's perfect. Right now I'm just going in with some moisturizer. I have a blog post on my skincare routine that I will also link where I kind of go over what moisturizer I use and why but it is a little bit more of a heavy duty moisturizer because 
I have dry skin, especially in my T-zone. When I was swimming in high school, especially, the chlorine would dry my nose out so bad, and I struggled with skin literally just coming off in flakes throughout the day. So I had to find a moisturizer that was lightweight enough to not feel like I was putting a mask on every morning, but thick enough to get the job done. So I have been using the Garnier 3-in-1 and I love it. It can also be used as a mask if you apply it on heavily, which is nice. I expand a little bit more on why I use it in my blog post, but that's my story. <laughs> now I am priming my face with the NYX Angel Veil vale Primer. Upon recommendation from my good girl, Jackie Ina, my queen. Jackie, 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 Jackie. This is a pretty good dupe for, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, but I believe it is the Hourglass Primer. It leaves my face feeling a little tacky, but overall a lot smoother. And it also, fills in my pores, which is important for me, especially along my nose. I get a lot of blackheads and I have very visible pores on my nose. Next, I'm going to go in with my foundation. It's the L'Oreal True Match Lumi. So because my mom's gonna be horrified at my nails. Because I have dry skin, I like to go for products that put a little bit of that dewiness back into it. And I don't typically like really mattifying foundations because they make me look washed out a lot of times. They make me look cakey. I'm much more prone to creasing. I need a little bit more on my nose, my schnoz. I also like to mix it with the MAC Strobe Cream in Pink Light because it adds a very pretty natural sheen that really shows through without making it look oily or greasy. It's just kind of like diluting a foundation with a moisturizer. This one just has a little bit of shine in it. So, a little bit of that. So because I have pink, un because I have red undertones, it's not even pink, it's red. My mom is a redhead, so I have very fair skin, and it's pretty sensitive. Like, I don't know if you noticed when I put my primer on, it immediately got really red. And so I like to have a more neutral foundation to balance that a little bit, but I do add a little bit of that pink back with the pink light because a lot of times if I use, especially in my foundation, I can budge a little bit more on bronzers or highlights or something, but if I go in with a foundation that has really warm, really yellow undertones, you can see the distinct line of where my foundation is and it just makes my face look wonky. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's very evident that I'm wearing foundation and it just looks like it does not match my skin, you know? It can be the same shade with a different undertone and it just completely messes up my entire face. So, it completely messes up my entire base. That's the key to finding your right shade and really making your makeup look cohesive is knowing what your undertones are and playing to that. This foundation has a nice formula because you can build it if you want that full beat glam. But like I said, that's not necessarily what I'm going for today. And my favorite physical feature about myself is my freckles. So I really like those to shine through when I wear my makeup. And I get compliments on them a lot when I'm out in public. So I like those to be kind of front and center. So I really use a pretty light layer of foundation. Like I said, I'm just going for my skin but with Facetune, in real life. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go in with concealer. This is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. Your fave, everybody's fave. I like this because it gets the job done, but it's not as thick as the Tarte Shape Tape, and it is buildable, so I can do a light wash on those days where I'm wearing virtually no makeup and I just need a little help right under my eyes, and I can just pat it into the skin with my finger and it looks natural. 
or when I have a full face on, I can layer it on and illuminate the high points of my face. I use the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter translucent powder in, there's the camera, in the shade Lavender because it is very brightening. I actually use a brush to apply my translucent powder. This is the Morphe M438 because I can go in with a really light hand. There's a very fine balance before I start to get cakey under my eyes and so I like to build it up with a brush because it can kind of suck the life out of my face since I do have dry skin. You know, I just did all of that work making my skin look dewy and luminous so I don't want to go in with a super mattifying powder and suck all the life out of it, which is why I've stopped applying my under eye translucent powder with a beauty blender. Um, that's just what works for me. If you do have a little bit more oily skin, you can get away with using a beauty sponge, but what I recommend is when you dip into the powder, blot it off on your hand first, because one, you'll get that excess powder off, and two, you won't go in with the full force and just completely wash out your face, and then it'll be easier for you to build up. So, I use a very light amount. This is purely for the purpose of setting that concealer in place so that I don't crease under my eyes. Now I also have this very prominent forehead line. I'm a very expressive person and this tends to be the main place where my makeup breaks up. So before I apply any powder, I'm going to make sure that I've pounced out any creasing. And this is where I'll go in with a beauty sponge because I do need a little bit more product. And I'm just going to press that in. And that will ensure that when I go in with bronzer that it won't break up throughout the day. I think I'm going to name my forehead wrinkle Irma. She just has Irma energy, you know? Another place that I really tend to get red is my nose. So I'm going to apply a pretty light layer of concealer right up the middle and then later on I'll go in and contour. Also, because the Fenty powder is a little bit pricey, I also really like the Maybelline Fit Me translucent powder. I use the shade 5 Fair, and this is nice because you can find a shade that's closer to your skin tone and you're less prone to flashback because, especially for deeper skin tones, if you go in with that white translucent powder, even if you blend it out in person, later on, if you take a picture with the flash, it can kind of expose you. This is nice because it has a wider shade range, and so you can tailor it a little bit more to you. But this is just the loose finishing powder. And finally, for the rest of my face that I didn't set with the translucent powder, I'm going to go in with a pressed powder. This is the Maybelline Fit Me um, Matte and Poreless Press Powder in the shade 110 Porcelain. If I haven't already stressed this enough, I am pale. And I just go in with a fluffy brush and press this into the face. Again, I don't want to overpowder my face because then it'll suck the life out of my foundation. This is just enough to ensure that my foundation won't slip off of my face throughout the day. And now to add just a little bit more life because especially on a freshly powdered face you can look a little washed out, a little dry. So I use the Pixi Skin Treats Glow Mist. Focus, thank you. I will, quick disclaimer, I have broken out because of this one time. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out what combination of products caused me to have a reaction because the first time I used it, I looked great and then I used almost the exact same routine the very next day and broke out. I broke out in huge red hives 
everywhere that I'd set with translucent powder. So along here where I baked, here under my eyes and where my mustache is, I had a little on my forehead and it was burning. But I haven't experienced that since, so I really can't tell y'all what happened. But if you do have sensitive skin, which I do, be cautious using this and probably experiment with it before you have somewhere to be. And that way, if you do have a reaction, you don't have to take your entire base off and start over to try and cover hives like I did. So I spray it and then I just pounce that in with my beauty blender so that my skin really soaks it up and it kind of bonds with that powder and gives me a glow from within. See, isn't that pretty? I just have this slight sheen, especially on the high points of my face. And given I do have a ring light on me right now, still just even in person, it just adds life back into my face. Finally, this is key for me for making my makeup look really good and making it not necessarily look like makeup is setting my face in between steps. So I will set my face right after I finish my base and then I'll set my face again at the end of my routine. One ensures that your foundation doesn't wipe off if you, you know, rest your hand on your face while you're doing your eye makeup or anything. And it also gives your foundation a chance to melt into your skin and all of the products to really bond. I love the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. It's cheap, it's available at Ulta, and it's an aerosol, which means you don't get that camel spit, like, splotch on your face. Hello. I'm gonna be bronzing with the Anastasia Beverly Hills bronzer in the shade Rosewood. All of my products are dirty. I'm sorry. I'm also going to contour my nose, my schnoz. Um, so I use the Morphe E47, it's this angled brush, same bronzer. To kind of lay down that line of where I want my contour to start. And then I go in with the Morphe E8 and buff it out to make it look more blended. But it's still, see, it's still snatched. It still defines that clear point without it just being a harsh line right down the nose. Also, take a blending brush. This is just the Morphe M44, and I'll blend it up into where my nose kind of meets my eyebrow. And I'm not quite blending it in with the shadow, but I'm just making it all look a little bit more cohesive. And I learned this trick from Desi Perkins. You just take a little bit of bronzer, on your pinky right there in your cupid's bow and it makes your cupid's bow oh that looks crazy do you see it and now it makes your cupid's bow look deeper okay now for blush i'm going in with nars orgasm i think this is new packaging i just picked up a new one from ulta it is gorgeous i'm obsessed I'm taking a blush brush. This is the Morphe M530. And instead of just applying it on my cheekbones, I learned this from Alyssa Ashley's recent video on how to make rounder faces look more sculpted. I don't have a round face, but I do have a bit of a heart-shaped face. And so sometimes, especially from straight on, 
if I'm smiling, I feel like my face looks really wide. And so I, instead of applying it right on my cheekbones, follow the line of my bronzer and it just kind of works to like, you know? And finally, my favorite step is highlight. I'm using the Fenty Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighting Duo and I am going in with the shade Lightning Dust, which is most of her Kilowatt duos have more of a glitzy, kind of glittery shade. And then they have one that offers a little bit more of a sheen. Um, and that's the one that I'm going for today, more of just like a wet, dewy look versus like a glittery highlight. This highlighter, as you can see, is my favorite. It is very well loved, especially this shade, and you're about to see why, okay? So this is the Morphe M510. Do you see that? Oh my gosh, I love this highlight so much. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Mm. I just look like a fresh little glazed donut. Okay, lastly, I'm just gonna throw on a little bullet lipstick because I can just throw this in my bag when I go to graduation and it'll be easy to touch up. So this is my favorite nude at the moment. My favorite just true nude. Um, this is the Rimmel London Moisture Renew Lipstick in the shade Nude in the City. And it's very close to my real lip color. It's a little bit on the kind of dusty rose side, but it's still nude and it's still pink enough to kind of like give me a little bit of life back. All right guys, so my hair is done, my dress is on. I just wanna thank everyone who has been so supportive for so many years about me talking about this, you know, this wild idea of me starting a YouTube channel and being a blogger, and now it's kind of becoming a reality. And I never wanna take myself too seriously. I just wanna share something that I'm really passionate about with the people that I love and you know, learn some new tips and tricks along the way. I always want to hear your feedback. If you guys have any, you know, input into whatever the video or post topic may be, um, I'm learning too. And this is a great way for me to, you know, improve my skills and work on holding myself accountable for my hobbies. That was my biggest goal in all of this is to do something regularly that I love because especially as a college student, you can get very overwhelmed with the amount of tasks on your to-do list. And for the past two years, I realized that I haven't done anything creative and I really haven't done anything for myself. So here's to breaking that cycle and, you know, stepping out of our comfort zones because this is out of my comfort zone for sure. I'm so awkward on camera. I mean, let's be honest. I'm awkward in general, but in a face-to-face -face interaction, I'm usually kind of able to play it off as a sense of humor, but here it's just me running the show and I kind of just have to rely on what I've got. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I can't wait to make more videos after this. I'm truly so excited. So I will link my blog down below as well as the blog post that coincides with this video. I'm also going to link all my socials. The best way to be notified of when I do post on my blog would be through my Instagram. All of that will be linked below. Make sure if you want to get notified when I post another video, hit the bell notification because otherwise YouTube might not notify you when I post. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel. 
Oh my gosh, that's so weird to say. I never thought that I would say that. Give this video a thumbs up because especially for me starting from scratch, that is just such a huge deal to know that people actually like what I'm putting out. And I wouldn't want to put all the time and effort into creating videos that you guys don't want to watch. So if you do have any suggestions of videos that you want me to make in the future, please leave a comment down below. I am so, I just can't reiterate enough how excited I am to finally be doing this and to finally be sharing my passion for makeup with a community that is also so passionate about makeup. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.